Hello, my wonderful psychology students. Here is our next research method section on content analysis. So let's have a quick look at the spec link. It looks at content analysis. Within this, we've got to understand what coding and thematic analysis is all about. Now, when it comes to content analysis, remember in brackets, I put CA, it's my abbreviation of content analysis. We need to understand what it is. Now, content analysis is a qualitative way to analyze data. It is data that isn't presented in number form. Remember, number form is quantitative, and we've looked at plenty of ways to analyze quantitative data. This is qualitative data. And when we do content analysis, it's the way to analyze qualitative data is data that comes in some form of communication through speech conversations, people's presentations, texts, emails, newspaper articles, TV, films, books, magazines, in written format. It's a form of communication that we need to analyze. So we're taking this qualitative data and we're going to use content analysis to understand what it means. So a type of indirect observational analysis in which people are studied via the communications they have generated. And just like I've mentioned, it comes in all shapes and forms. It doesn't come in num number format. What we need to do is then try and understand the key communications within um, the journal article, the diaries, the newspaper articles that we're drawing. And the initial aim in content analysis is because there's so much data, we need to be able to summarize it in some shape or form so that we can start to make sense of it. Because we can't leave it in its full written form, we need to be able to condense it down. And from there, we'll be able to start understanding what it is. Now, the first thing we do to help condense it down is a process called coding. Now, coding is all about taking these large data sets and we start to analyze them and it's about categorizing them into meaningful units so that means we're looking for things that are reoccurring it could be a phrase of words it could be um, a reference to something so it allows us to start coding the information so counting the number of times a phrase occurs or a specific reference to a behavior, just like I've said. So it's about counting those times it happens. And then allows us to start to look at these patterns or and issues that have been identified. In essence, it does create quantitative data from the qualitative data that's been generated. Because what we need to do is we need to take this large amount of information and turn it into something workable. So the first thing we do is turn it into quantitative data because we've identified key patterns, key issues, key behaviors. So it's allowed us to create these categories. And we can see by the numbers uh, within each category how often it occurs, then it allows us to take the analysis further. So this is a really important, it's not saying it's no longer qualitative data, it is. It just allows us to perhaps identify that within newspaper articles that are referring to mental illness, that the nutters of societies, uh, the weirdos, it's perhaps using those type of phrases of words that we actually kind of see, well, hold on, they're occurring, are these stereotypical ideas or whatever, so it allows us to then direct our investigating further into what is referred to as thematic analysis. Now, thematic analysis um, is carried out 
once we've identified the themes from the coding. And these themes can either be implicit or explicit themes generated um, in this qualitative data that we've got. Now, what we mean by implicit, I am, so the first one we're looking, implicit, it means it's implied. It's saying in a roundabout way that this could be it. So, for example, they could be talking about the NHS. And in one part of the article, they've said, you know, um, there are more people uh, compared uh, with um, depression compared uh, in our country compared to other countries. And um, it could be environmental factors. And they're, they're giving all this type of information. So once you've read the article, it makes you kind of think, well, maybe mental health has a, a, or is a big burden on the NHS. It's not clearly directly saying it, it's implying in a certain way, so in a, an indirect way. When we talk about explicit themes, these themes that are clearly stating, it's pretty obvious, a direct link. So for example, newspaper heading could be um, mental health in Britain causes NHS to crumble. It's a direct cause. Implicit, it's implying it in some way, but not directly saying it. And explicit, it is directly saying that something is the cause. So we have different themes that will be generated within this qualitative data through our thematic analysis. So once the researchers are satisfied with this analysis, because then they're pulling out, you know, all these stereotypical views, perhaps types of behaviors, they can make the links between the categories. They can't just say, yes, we've analyzed it. And this is what we found. We've got these implicit and explicit themes. It needs to be reanalyzed again to check for the validity of the test. You know, it's like test, retest. You're testing it again to see whether you get the same or similar results to ensure that we've got reliability, which will increase the validity of um, our thematic analysis. And when this is done and we're saying, yes, these themes are clearly here, here are some of the key issues that need to be focused on a report can be then produced and given out to explain what the data, this qualitative data has told us. So let's have a quick recap. Qualitative data is some form of communication expressed by an individual in a written format, a verbal format. It can come in lots of different ways. It's very complex data, so we need to be able to break it down. So our first step is coding. This is where we're looking for the, the key um, behaviours, words, attitudes that keep occurring, categories within it. And then we place the data into categories. And once we've got these categories, we can then move on to a thematic analysis, looking perhaps starting at the biggest category and then analysing it further, looking to see whether these themes are implicit, explicit, um, how are they explained? How do they, are they applied? So it gives us a much deeper understanding as to why. Once we're satisfied with this, it gets repeated again, probably carried out by another researcher to test whether we've got the validity, whether they found the same or similar things. And if so, we can then understand this qualitative data and a report can be produced. Now, when it comes to qualitative data, now I'm just using a little bit of information that you already know about qualitative data, and I can bring this in as an evaluation here. A problem with qualitative data, it is very time consuming process and it requires specially trained individuals to carry out the analysis. Unlike quantitative data, where it's just a matter of counting things, here, we need specially trained and it is time consuming. 
and therefore um, that is a big problem and perhaps that's why there is more quantitative data generated than that as qualitative data another issue with um, qualitative analysis especially that content analysis is the lack of objectivity the researcher themselves hold their own biases so they could be interpreting things in a certain way that's why it's always important that we get another analysis done you know test retest we get inter-rater reliability we do all those type of things to test and because of their own biases it can actually in influence the process of the analysis it could influence their interpretation it can influence how um, they view something so it is a problem but there is something that's called reflexivity and this can play an important role before the researcher goes on to analysis uh, analyze not analysis analyze uh, the qualitative data they identify their own biases within that area and make themselves aware of what these biases are so they reflect on what their biases are and actually they can then use them and record them in the report that they're going to write and also perhaps link it to some of their own experiences which will then help with the interpretation of the data so say for example we're looking at a piece of research that looks at senior executives positions in businesses that are held by women and one of our research analysis once upon a time did have a career as a senior executive she's going to hold biases of that because it might have been an unpleasant experience because you know she might have felt intimidated and all those type of things but if she was analyzing data and brought this in she could explain her own experience and then that will allow us to perhaps understand the analysis more we will look at reflexivity at a later stage. I know it might be a little bit complex now, but reflexivity plays a very important role to help bring about a little bit more objectivity. But people that analyze data are humans, they're going to have their own biases and therefore there could be a lack of object, object, object I'm getting tongue tied, objectivity in their analysis. Let's look at some positives when it comes to content analysis. Content analysis deals with qualitative data. Qualitative data gives us a lot more insight compared to quantitative data. Now, I'm just using something you know about qualitative data and quantitative data. It allows the researcher to understand why or how or what influences the behavior rather than just how often it occurs. So the nice thing about content analysis, it gives us an in-depth account of what is uh, the, re or the, the data, the communications is telling us. It lets us understand. It tells us how, why, and what. Another um, strength of content analysis, it actually may help us avoid some of the ethical issues that are associated with psychological research. Much of the material that gets analysed is in the public domain. So that means the public can access it. It's in TV, the news, the internet, magazines, uh, transcripts from um, trials, you name it, it's in the public there. We can access it. So we don't have issues like gaining consent or looking to see whether it will cause psychological harm because this communication already exists. And that's a good thing. So it allows us to avoid those ethical issues and allows us to carry out that deeper analysis in which we know it is not going to have these obstacles. So content analysis is a way of dealing with qualitative information. So let's bring on this exam or exam questions, didn't see the S there. Let's read the stem. In an observational study, 
a hundred cars were fitted with video cameras to record the driver's behavior. Two psychologists used content analysis to analyze the data from the films. They found that 75% of accidents involved a lack of attention by the driver. The most common distractions were using hand freeze phones or uh, talking to a passenger. Other distractions included looking at the scenery, smoking, eating, personal grooming, and trying to reach for something within the car. So here we have a nice step. They've had uh, footage from the video cameras, from cam, dash cams, and they analyzed that through content analysis. So question A, what is content analysis? Two marks. Okay, let's understand the question. What is content analysis? So it's asking you to, in essence, in essence, define what it is for two marks. So that means we're giving two clear pieces of information to clearly describe what content analysis. It's pure AO1 because it's asking kind of like for a definition with regards to it. Question B, explain how the psychologist might have carried out content analysis to analyze the film clips of driver behavior. Okay, so we've got the word explain. So that means it's going to be in some detail. How the psychologist might have carried it out. So what would they actually do? So this is kind of telling us, how would they have analyzed the film footage? So this is an AO2 question. They're asking you to apply your knowledge of content analysis to explain how the psychologist would have carried it out. So what they would actually do. And this is worth four marks. So we're looking at like four key things, but remember a four marker is usually on a grade boundary. So it's really important that we're giving enough detail because it does say explain. So that's going to be in some detail but we're explaining it in an AO2 manner. That means we're explaining what the psychologist would do to analyze the data. So what I'd like you to do here now is pause. And once you've paused, I'd like you to answer the questions and then we'll come back and you can mark your answers. So pause here, come on. Don't just kind of say, I don't wanna do this. Practicing exam questions, especially question B, right? The application one is really, really important. So please pause. Talk to you soon. Right, great. I'm glad you have paused. Okay, so um, if you've wrote this answer down, and which I really hope you have, get your different color pen. So you can tick and you can annotate in to see um, what you've got right and what you haven't got right. So question A, what is content analysis? So pure AO1, two marks. Content analysis is a technique for analyzing qualitative data of various kinds. Data can be placed into categories and counted through coding and can be further analyzed into themes by thematic analysis. There we go, nice and clear. It's about, uh, it's a, an, a technique to analyze qualitative data, great. It's about categories and counting through coding and we're linking in the idea of themic analysis within it. So one mark is awarded for a brief statement and to get the further mark, we need to make sure that there is elaboration. So there's enough detail, because remember it's asking you to explain. So if you just gave a very brief statement, you'd get one mark. But if you've given it in a way that allows for further elaboration, you'll get the second mark. So do a quick comparison, look at yours. Content analysis is a technique for analyzing qualitative data. That's a very brief statement. So we need further elaboration. Data can be placed into categories and counted through coding and can be further analyzed into themes by themic analysis. There's your other mark. Right, excellent. So write down what you got, how many marks, why did you get one mark? What did you do? Or why did you get both marks? Yep, really important. OK, 
Okay, so let's go back to question, back up with this one. B, explain how the psychologist might have carried out content analysis to analyze the film clips of the driver's behavior. So again, we know this is an AO2 question. We've got our little grade boundaries. Uh, one mark is basic, basic identification of the process involved in contact analysis, watching films and counting. Now, that bracket bit is really important, watching films and counting. If you do not apply according to this little mark scheme, you're not going to get any marks. Three, two to three marks, reasonable accurate coverage of the process involved, four marks, effective explanation of the process involved in content analysis, referring to some or all of the above points. Now, the above points are here, so let's see what we have. The psychologist could have begun by watching some of the film clips of the driver's behavior. Well, that's what they've got to do. They've got to start watching it. Good starting point. This would enable the psychologist to identify potential categories which emerged from the data of the different types of distractions seen in the film. Right, so that's what it's allowing them to do. Such categories themes might include passenger, dis uh, passenger distractions, gadget distractions, etc. So you could have included that. They could have been uh, looking at themselves in a mirror, right? Turn it into something real. The psychologist would have then watched the film again and counted the number of examples which fell into each category to provide quantitative data. Because remember, you're explaining what they are doing. You're not telling us what content analysis is. You're explaining the process the psychologist would have to carry out. Note, and there is a note here that a minimum of one mark if no engagement with the STEM. So actually it's a little bit more generous than what the grade boundary said. So if you haven't, if you've just explained what content analysis is, you're not going to get the marks. So really, we've got four points, we've got four points there, and that's what you should include, but you write it in a way that explains how. So let's do a bit comparison to yours. What have you got? What mark would you give yourself and why? So let's pause here while you do that. Right, great stuff. Always remember if it's an AO tune as asking how, it's kind of like giving a step for step instructions what they would actually do. Really important to remember that. So, content analysis is a way to analyze qualitative data. Remember, if you've got any questions, please do not hesitate to email me. See you soon in our next video. Take care.